54% of the Brazilian population is of African descent. You can see the legacy of the slave trade in the faces here. Brazil was the last country in the Western world to abolish slavery. It did so in 1888, 20 years after the U.S. did. But despite the fact that more than half this country has African roots, you may have noticed that almost all of the faces that you have seen so far in the clips that we've shown you from Brazilian television, either corporate media or religious channels, have one thing in common. They're white. If you turn on the TV in Brazil, there are hardly any black actors or presenters, hardly any black journalists. This is across all of the mainstream channels. We are not seen there. The invisibility of black people in spaces of power is glaring. Just go to the newsroom of any newspaper or television station and look at the journalists working there. Almost all of them are white. So the coverage of black people on television or in the Brazilian news must go through the hands and the work of the white journalist. This kind of television reinforces stereotypes all the time. It reinforces the myth of racial democracy and that everyone has rights and equality and everything is OK. So when certain issues are covered, for example, when we try to raise the issue of black genocide, that every 23 minutes a young black person is murdered in Brazil, how does it end up being portrayed? It's always shootouts in the peripheries and the criminals were killed. There isn't even a narrative that serves to inform the public of the facts in Brazil, a country that was the last in the world to abolish slavery. The depiction of that Brazilian reality does not just occur in news programming. The same can be seen on the entertainment side and the Brazilian soap operas known as telenovelas. Telenovelas are an integral part of the Brazilian media story for reasons both social and financial. A successful telenovela will capture huge audiences, routinely in the tens of millions. Their plot twists will drive everyday conversation in Brazil. For the networks producing them, all of which face the economic challenges born of the digital revolution, telenovelas are still cash cows. One of them, Globo's Avenida Brazil, reportedly delivered ad revenues of about one billion dollars. Avenida Brasil. And telenovelas have something that Brazilian news programs do not. They have international reach. Globo's flagship newscast, Jornal Nacional, dominates domestic news ratings here, but relatively few people outside Brazil will ever see it. Telenovelas are an export industry. Avenida Brazil has been transmitted in 130 countries in 19 languages. In that respect, telenovelas are the face that Brazil shows to the world. And much like the country's newscasters, the faces that get shown are nothing less than a misrepresentation of what Brazil really is. Because again, they're mostly white. In the soap operas of Brazil, we have a rich world, a happy world, a white world. What is it that a soap opera does? It enters the general public's home and tells a child who is still growing up what they are not going to be. The places they cannot reach. Brazilian private television does this every day. Every day. For example, in adaptations of books in which the main characters are black, when they make them into TV series, they cast them as white. And when we ask, why did you put a white actor to play the role of a black character, they say, it doesn't make a difference. And this has happened in some very famous series in Brazil in the past, like Isaura, the slave and Chiquinha Gonzaga. A senhora Dona Isabel toca piano? Há alguém no Rio de Janeiro que não toque? Os escravos? Huh? Os escravos não tocam piano. It may not happen today, because now we have a platform where we are able to protest. Because of the internet, we can make some noise. After a lot of pressure from the black movement, you can see, little by little, black actors gaining leading roles in soap operas. However, it is an illusion to think that placing a black person on television solves the problem. 
The way that black people are portrayed in most of the mainstream media follows and legitimizes the structural racism that we have in Brazil. Because the successful world, the world that works is white. And then when the commercials come on, a white person comes along as the representative of buying power, of acquisitive power. And then afterwards, when the news comes on, there's a black person robbing, there's a black person being arrested. So every day, private television in Brazil attacks Brazilians. Finally, back to Globo and the story of the Brazilian TV beauty queen Nayara Justino. As examples of media malpractice in this country go, it is nowhere near the worst, but it is revealing. The title, Mulata Globaleza, was created by Globo. It's a beauty contest tied to its coverage of Brazil's annual carnival. That word, mulata, which some say has its roots in the word mula, meaning mule, is considered racist. A word loaded with colonial connotations, chosen by Globo for a beauty contest ostensibly held to celebrate racial integration. Viewers get to vote for the Globaleza, and 2014 marked a first. The winner, Nayara Justino, was dark-skinned and unmistakably black. A Globeleza 2014 é Nayara. Not everyone approved. Online trolls called Justino a monkey, a darkie. A few months later, Globo had Justino replaced. It set the results of the vote aside and simply picked another woman. Globo insisted that its decision had nothing to do with skin color, that the choice came down to artistic fitness for the role. It said artistic merit prevails. The woman Globo picked to replace Justino had African roots as well, but her skin tone is much lighter. And as one of the country's relatively few newsreaders of African descent will tell you, in the Brazilian media, racial integration has its limits. I'm a black woman, but I have a skin tone that is a little lighter. And I can say that I am privileged in this, because the darker your skin is, the more you have to suffer in Brazil. There was an official whitening policy in Brazil. The initiative that brought European immigrants here after the abolition of slavery was not accidental. It was done in order to whiten the population, because they believed that within 200 years, there would be no more blacks in Brazil. But we're still here, in this country, which still denies its African origins, and which runs on the idea that the whiter, the better. In a way, the story of that beauty queen typifies the way Globo sees Brazil. Back in 1964, the network supported a military coup that brought down a government Brazilians had voted for. Two years ago, Globo called its viewers onto the streets to help depose another democratically elected government. Globo is not even above overturning a public vote for a beauty queen if the choice of the people fails to align with the network's idea of who should represent Brazil.